we are back. We are getting ready to apply the glue or the putty. So basically this is a Ziploc bag um, that I mix it up in a cup and then I put it in the bag and then I clip the end off, use it kind of like an icing spreader, spreader. So basically what we're gonna do is apply the glue around the rim of the bottom half and on the top half and then use a popsicle stick to make sure it's good and spread out even. Um, I'm gonna do this in a uh, rapid uh, video because it takes a little bit of time. And then I have my clamps all in position here and then I'll get them clamped um, once I get it all spread and then I'll, we'll talk about it after that. So here we go. As you can see, there's a lot of clamps on there. You've got to kind of work fast. Even though the material does take a little bit of time to cure, um, I mix this exactly the minimum, so I got time to work with it um, between mixing it and applying it into the bag, trimming it, spreading it. Um, all in all, there's still plenty of time to do it. Um, so what I'll do is that the cup that this was mixed in, there's still a little residual in there. I'll monitor that cup. And when this starts to kick, I'll come in and remove the, the clamps from the tank so that it's still somewhat green and I can dissolve any uh, extra that got on the tank during the, the process of clamping this together. The nice thing is with a tank is that you line up the center lines to center lines and the, the part is uh, basically centered from the top and the bottom. Um, when you lay up a mold, the mold can still, shrinkage still causes the mold to collapse in a little bit. So what I have with this top part is the sides are tilted in just a little, a small amount. And so when you put this bottom section in there, I have to spread the tank and you've probably seen it with me when I'm pushing my fingers apart, trying to line up because I'm able to see the parting line and the actual part, the bottom part, and make sure those two align up. So basically that's all I'm trying to do when I'm going through here. Definitely in this front section right here, the rear section is not so bad. It's the front, so I have to spread it apart. And I, the, some of the clamps that I have, some of them are much harder pressure the red ones are not as hard a pressure, but these black ones are extremely, you know, a much harder grip. So I use those as my fixturing uh, parts to really lock the part together and make sure that it stays. And then once it's all clamped, I kind of balance it lightly and set it down on the clamps because the, the putty still has a little sag to it. So what I'm trying to do is uh, allow the, with the extra cure time, um, allowing the putty to go back in and puddle around the seam area inside the tank. Because now once the tank is together, there's no going back. Um, so I, I want to make sure that the putty sags down into the seams and uh, creates a really good seal all the way around. So for this, we have approximately um, a half an inch, 12 inch or 12 millimeters of of sealing flange all the way around the tank so that's a really good sealing surface and then of course being glued all the way around the actual stiffness of the tank because of these angles makes the tank really really strong um, and it's lighter than a steel tank um, but the tank is still extraordinarily strong um, so anyways when this is all uh, cured up 
and cleaned up. I'll come back and show you what it looks like without the clamps on. And then we can go to the process of cleaning up this uh, clamping flange with the belt sander. And then that will lead us to being able to treat the internal side of the tank and then the tank will pretty much be done. All right, hey everybody, we are back. I've already went and took the Liberty and I took all the clamps off. As I noted before, I have a big box of them and you see from the previous clip that it, I put a lot of them on there. That's generally to make sure that I don't, because it is around two millimeters thick, except for at the flange area, this is a total of about eight to 10 millimeters. I'd go closer to eight. Uh, so there is a little bit of strength there to crush. So I do a lot of clamps to make sure that it doesn't shift or anything of that nature. But we'll bring in so you can see what the uh, seam looks like and while it's green what I do is I take the clamps off right when the putty is starting to kick and it's a really firm um, gel state um, and it's you know, really tacky it's got a really tacky surface to it I'll pull the clamps off at that point because it's cured enough that it's not going to shift. Uh, and then I take a razor knife and I trim off the extra that squishes out. And while it's still in that soft form, if there's any on the flange all the way around, I can use acetone uh, with a paper towel and I go through and wipe it and it clears it off of the uh, the surface so I still keep a nice surface finish and not do anything so at this point we're going to uh, go ahead and sand this down clean up this edge and then go in preparation for uh, putting the tank sealer in okay here we are we are getting ready to uh, apply the sealer into the tank and I wanted to go over a little bit as you can see the tank has now been completely prepped. Uh, the edges have all been cleaned up um, and sanded and it's basically exteriorly ready to ship minus I have to drill the hole in the back back here which I'm not going to cover in the video. This video is basically about layup and how I go about doing so. So at this point we have to apply our tank sealer and as I noted previously in the series that this uh, Pour 15, this is the brand that I use. This is the half pint size. Um, is perfect for this size tank. Um, the reason I use a tank sealer inside, when I used vinyl ester resin, which is has a, a, a decent uh, being able to resist uh, ethanol damage to the uh, materials, um, I decided that I needed, I wanted to add an insurance but there's a twofold for this using this tank sealer. The tank sealer is also is one a to give a an extra insurance policy for resistance to alcohol to ethanol, um, and then the second one would be to seal the fiberglass fibers that may be exposed inside the tank um, during the process of laying up. Even if you don't sand it, like I've etched in the tank, which was covered earlier in the series, uh, I etched the inside of the tank. And that was to give a good bonding surface for this material. Um, so it potentially uh, exposed some of the fibers in the, the tank. And what will happen is the fuel will literally, it, it takes a really long time for it to do it, but it will eventually start to seep into the fibers and it works its way out generally in the cut sections. So you would potentially see uh, fuel could wick out through here. Um, it, it may be so minuscule um, that, you know, over time you're not going to notice it, but what will happen is it will cause the paint, when someone applies paint to the tank, will eventually start to lift from the underside. It will cause it to lose it, uh, it hersion to the uh, tank. So by applying the uh, sealer, we're helping to prevent that. Um, the sealer is really a thin material, so it coats really well. And if there's any exposed fibers, it's going to soak into those exposed fibers. Um, and then once it cures, it leaves a thin film. 
See, this material is designed to go basically in like metal fuel tanks that has like small pinholes uh, or rust, or it helps prevent rust within your fuel tank because ethanol draws uh, the moisture and the moisture causes the rust in the fuel tank. Where in this case, we don't have to worry about rust, it's fiberglass, but we do have to worry about ethanol damage to the plastics. You know, eth you know vinyl ester resin is still considered in the plastics family. So we're basically trying to prevent damage to the plastics and seal it for uh, wicking. Anyways, we're going to, uh, on this mater particular material, please read the directions. If you've never used uh, a type of fuel sealer, um, this particular fuel sealer doesn't want you to shake the can so because that, that'll introduce bubbles. And then those bubbles are basically very, very small. So when it has a thin layer inside the tank, those bubbles eventually pop and could potentially leave an exposed area that fuel could get through and potentially lift it over time. So you're supposed to stir it with a stir stick um, and then uh, apply it into this. So follow, follow the directions. I'm not gonna cover too deeply on this. Um, so basically what I do is I apply uh, clear packing tape over the bottom ports right here and here. And then I take and mix the material and then pour it in. I apply tape over the top of this hole. And then once the tape is in, um, then you can start moving it around. Um, generally, I leave it in there for the exact amount of time and then I slowly moving it around. Like I said, it is very thin. It's um, I'm trying to think of a good, like hot syrup. Um, it, it's pretty thin whenever, as far as you're working it around in here. Um, so once I have this all coated, then I remove the tape from the actual tank and then you have to discard the rest. Don't try to save it. Um, you discard it. So I have my trash can. I set my trash can up and I sit there and move it. And you want to try to get as much of the excess material as you can out of it. Um, so that's basically what I do. Like I said, I'm not going to cover that. There's really no need. This video is completely about the production of this tank. And I wanted you to go about, you know, to know how I produce this fiberglass tank and what materials I use. And once the tank sealer is in and it's dry, the tank is complete. I put the uh, tank flange in position. I drill my hole back here for the quick release mount that goes here. And then I take and run a tap through the threads because when I'm turning this around and trying to get the material out, I do get it on here. So I have to have a lot of rags around and some acetone so I can re-clean the tank because I get this all over the surface of the tank. And so once it's all done, it does get in some of the threaded inserts. So I take, and once it's dry, I run a tap through each one of the holes, so the M4 holes and the M6 on the very bottom so I can chase the threads. So there's no potential for a binding when the customer gets the tank and goes to install their, their hardware in there and have a risk of them damaging the thread, just trying to tighten it. So I make sure that they get good clean threads. So anyways, without further ado, I want to say thank you for following along with this series. Um, please like and subscribe. Leave comments down in the comment section. If you have any questions on my processes, on how I do things, materials that I use, um, other types of theory. Anyways, I want to say thank you uh, and good day.